first time on, welcome. If you've registered and you received the information, great. Um, if you need to receive that going forward, you will receive it on a, I, I sent it out on a Saturday. I emailed it out, the information's for the class. And my email address is wildc188 at gmail.com. So if you want that information in advance and a picture to draw, then certainly sign up and there's no obligation. If you need to be removed from it, you just send another email and I take you off right away, not, um, not to worry and it's not sent to anyone else. So it's very private. And um, so for those that have just come on, you'll need two containers of water. Just, hi Sandy. So just plain water, two containers, a blow dryer if you've got one handy, brushes, I've got a one, a two, a three, a five, and then I've got a big mop brush and some paper towel. And our colors, of course, which are cerulean blue, ochre. You can have a variety of red if you like. If you have purple, great. If you don't, you can make purple from, from red and blue, if you mix those together, and black for our silhouette of our crane. So I like to start at the beginning of the hour so that we're not holding people up and I like our project to finish in the one hour time period. And in order to do that, we need to start um, right at the hour. So I think we're there. So again, welcome. I bless you. Thank you for coming and painting with me. I hope your holidays, your time away uh, were good. Your New Year's is, a gift, is off to a good start. And I like just to give a starting for our art class to just get in the, the mindset of painting. So this is an hour dedicated specifically for you. So if you take this time and you really focus just for this hour, you'll find that it will help you relieve some of the outside stresses that might be going on. So with that, we'll take three deep breaths. And at the top, we'll just take a deep breath in and then hold it at the top. And when we release, then just really drop your shoulders down. So find something in the room that makes you smile, that, that you like, that gives you that feeling of, of joy or happiness. And we'll do those three deep breaths starting now. So first, first deep breath in and hold it and look at that object or envision that object in your mind and drop your shoulders. Release that breath. We hold a lot of tension in our neck. So if you want to give yourself a little massage, that might be helpful. Second deep breath in and hold it at the top and find that object in your mind or somewhere in your room. Smile, lots to do and release. And a third deep breath in and hold it just for a second or two, smile and release. I give you lots to do in a second of time, but it's an important second that really can get you into the mindset of where we are right now. So I'm going to turn my camera. So for those that are just on, if, um, if you've missed that breathing exercise, if I say to you during the class, don't get stressed out, just take a deep breath. Then it's just a deep breath in and a release, really letting that go. Uh, paper towel you'll need, brushes you'll need, water in a container, two actually if you've got them, one that's clear and one's for rinsing your brushes. And with that, I'm going to turn my camera so that we can see the actual picture. So you can get this picture again for those that, that uh, didn't have the picture before, you can email me and get on the email list. And by getting on the email list, every Saturday I send out the information. It's always free. You're always welcome to come or not. It's up to you. There's no obligation, but I'm so grateful that you're here. So I'm going to start with my largest brush. I, as I said, I call it a mop brush. And I'm going to get my whole canvas wet with water starting at the top right at the very top. Oops, I'm missing just a little bit. Let's turn my camera just a little bit. There we go. 
So we're going to get the whole canvas wet from top to bottom in clear water. So you're wetting the whole thing. You're priming your canvas to accept the paint. It will start to move as we put the paint on, but we're just starting with clear water to start with. So you can go right over that crane, right over those birds. We're not worried about them. And once you've got that water on, so I'm giving a good surf. And I'm going to start at the bottom and work my way up. So I'm starting with cerulean blue at the bottom. So I'm going right over those legs with the blue. Right over the bottom of the legs with that cerulean blue. This is where the crane is standing at the bottom. So we want this to look fairly dark. So if it takes more than one coat, go ahead, add a little more, a little more paint than water on your brush will help. And we'll take that same cerulean blue and run it up the top, right over the head of the crane. So it's going to be a little bit lighter. It's not quite as dark as the water down below. This is our sky. And it's okay that we cover over that crane. And then I'm going to move into my ochre color. So I've got my ochre. And I'm just coming underneath the head of that bird. Nice coat of ochre. And I'm going to run a little bit of that ochre right at the center line, just on one side of the bird. And if it runs into the blue, I'm okay with that. So this is just our background. And the next color we'll introduce is our red. So whatever color red you have, I'm using something called carmine red. And where I stopped with that ochre line, I'm going to add that red. So I'm just gonna cover over any white that's still there. Cover, I'm just gonna add that red on there. It's going to move a little bit because that the canvas is still wet.
And I'm going to carry on with that red just a little bit below that line. Now, if that red thins out too much, I'm going to darken it a little bit more. I want a little bit more drama. And I'm not really so concerned about perfect lines that everything is exactly even. So I'm coming back into my cerulean blue once I've got that red on. And I'm going to draw that line across the center. You see, that's just putting cerulean blue on top of the red and it's turned it to purple. So if you have purple, if I put purple on there instead, just a straight purple, I get a little deeper color. And that's up to you. If you want it to be a little deeper, you can do that. And it's okay to go right over that crane because we are going to paint that as a silhouette. But you see, as it's wet, it's starting to run and bleed a little bit. And it just gives that, that effect of the sky. That's the difference between our horizon of our sky and our water. So we're putting that def uh, defining line in between. So again, if you have purple, you can put purple on there. And it doesn't even necessarily have to be a perfectly straight line. Hi, can Hi. I um, can I ask you, um, I know you said the crane um, will be a little dark, but I have a problem not having an eye in the crane. And so when you get to the crane, could you please show me what shape eye and stuff I, I do want to put an eye on? Okay. Thank you. Sure. I'll, I'll leave a spot. It won't matter. Um, with, the, with the blue that I've got on there that's over the... the um, it's light enough, yes. That's, that's on the face. If I was to use a brush right now and just carve a little circle out and leave a little white space. If I hold that close, I've just used my brush and lifted off the color. So yes. I've got a white spot. So let's leave that white spot. If you're able to lift that off and leave a white spot, that would be helpful for you. Now, when, when I do my crane, I'm not going to give it an eye because it is a silhouette, uh, but it, that will give you a uh, space to keep clear. So at this point, I have lots of color all blending, running together all over the place. And so I'm going to use my clear water and my mop brush. And I'm going to start just putting some blending lines of color, just using my mop brush going from side to side, just blending and putting a few lines in my sky, just identifying that line a little better just with a mop brush. Is and just that wet? Hi, is that a wet or is that not wet? Is that a dry I have, brush? I have a damp brush so I've I've dipped it in water so it started off clean and then I tapped it off so most of the water is out of it and I'm just using a damp brush just to go from side to side just to blend those colors a little bit so it's not completely wet it's just a damp brush But I do find I've lost a little bit of the blue, the cerulean blue that I wanted at the bottom underneath the feet. So I'm going to go back on 
two thirds of my canvas at the bottom and just fill that cerulean blue back in again. So I just want to stance where my crane will be standing a spot a little bit darker, a little bit deeper blue. And behind this crane, there's a nice red streak. I'm just going to fill that in with fresh red, just going from large to small, I'm just leaving that to stand out in the middle of nowhere. And so way back at the beginning, I had said to you, if you're getting a little bit stressed about your crane or a little bit stressed about the background color, just take a deep breath. This is an art class that's just about going step by step, one piece at a time, not worried about the outcome. It's going to be beautiful just with the colors that you've already put on. So just trust in the process. My ochre, because of the water has gone a little bit lighter, I'd like to add some fresh ochre and it's just gonna kind of stand out there in the middle of nowhere, but it's going to blend in. It's going to give a nice background. So just a little bit of fresh ochre on there. And now that I've got my background color on, I'm going to blow dry my, my background. So we need to have this completely dry before we start to paint the silhouette. So this might take us a few minutes to dry, maybe, uh, maybe five minutes to dry. So I'm going to put my uh, my uh, volume on mute and blow dry and I will be back to you when I'm done. Uh, I think actually I'm just going to, before I do that, I'm going to add one more touch of that purple. So I have a nice deep line. I'm looking for a nice deep line across the center. So if there's anything that you want to do before you blow dry, go ahead and do that now. If there's anything you want to touch up in your background, but we'll need to have this dry before we carry on. Please keep in mind that this is just a piece of paper. If you're not 100% happy with the results that you get from today, there are recordings available. So you can do this over and over and you can add your own colors and even your own variations. So I encourage you to try, don't let this be the last time that you paint. I encourage you to try other things as well. Have fun with this. It's, it's a nice medium. Watercolor is a very forgiving medium. You can do a lot of different things. I find that it doesn't matter um, what you do in watercolor really. It, uh, just about everything can be lifted off or moved or adjusted once it's dried a little bit. There's so many tips and tricks and hopefully you learn something from today's class, but not to be stressed about anything today. It's just a learning tool for you for fun share uh, being it with um, shared uh, other artists that are also experiencing um, trying something new. So each week there is a new project 
And so I don't stick with just any one thing. I don't just do trees or I don't just do frogs or I don't just do uh, birds. I chose this subject because it was nice and bright and I thought it was beautiful for a new year, a nice start. So hopefully you enjoy. So in order to know whether or not your canvas is dry, if you put the back of your hand, and I say the back of your hand, rather than the palms of your fingers, the back of your hand, if it's cold, it's still wet in places. So it needs to be completely dry and room temperature. We don't want oils from, the, from our hands to go on and destroy any of our, our work. But take a deep breath in and just relax in the process. Trust that what you're doing is going to work out. And the card that we have for halftime today is I can do it. And the word is trust, surprisingly, and wasn't using that on purpose. So it says, and this is for all of us, so thanks for the person that chose this. I'm not sure who you are. But it says, in times of trouble, remember this. Who you think you are cannot handle this challenge, but who you really are can and will. So in times of trouble, remember this. Who you think you are cannot handle this challenge, but who you really are can and will. So really what that says is trust in yourself and don't think that you can do it because you really can and you probably will. So with that, let's move on to our silhouette of our crane. So we've got our background done. Now we're going to start with just plain black. I'm using a small brush, a number three pointed brush. It's very small. It's not a one, it's not a zero, but it is a three. And so I'm just dipping it in the water and then into my black paint. And I'm going to find that outline of the crane. So I'm going to start with the bill or the beak. And I'm just going to outline that head just with black. I'm just going to outline the neck right down to the body. So I'm just going over the top. So we just work slowly and methodically, a little bit at a time. If, for example, someone was asking for the eye to be left and, and defined, then outline that eye. And we'll just leave that if, if that's what you want to do. Uh, this is a silhouette, so I'm going to complete the whole head. I'm not going to leave that eye section, but if you wanted to leave an eye section, go around the outside of it first. And then as you paint, you'll leave that blank. So with the black paint, I'm just going in and I'm just filling in. So you can see if I fill in and leave that space, then I have room for the eye. So I'm not leaving the room for the eye. I'm filling it in. I'm filling in the whole head. As it's a silhouette, silhouettes typically, you don't see the details. And then just coming and filling in right down. So we're going right over our background color. And then I'm going to do the same over the back. So that feather comes right up and over and I'm just following the drawn line that I've got coming around the bottom of the tail feather. So I'm doing my outline first and I've got this, the belly, the stomach area.
And if your black starts to, to thin out a little bit, if you've got more water in it and you need to redo your silhouette with fresh black, go ahead. If it's turning a little bit on the gray side or you want it a little bit darker, if you're using Payne's gray and you want it a little bit darker, you can add a red or a blue to your Payne's gray and it will darken it up. But you'll need a dark blue like an ultramarine or even an indigo blue would work for that. So remember, this is not about perfection. This is about trying something new, having some fun, looking at your artwork, determining what you, know, what you can do with it. If you like to give gifts to people, your artwork is wonderful for a gift. And then I'm going just to start to fill in, since I've got the outline done, I'm just going to start to fill in that body. And I'm not trying to do it all in one stroke. I'm gonna take my time. If it's a little bit lighter in spots, I'll be able to fill that in and darken it up. And remember, if you start to get stressed, just take a deep breath. Just enjoy the time. It's a little bit square on the end of the feathers, just, just kind of a square ending. So now we have our crane without legs. We want to give our crane some legs. So I'm switching to a small brush, very tiny. It's a number one. If you have a zero, that would work as well. Zero sounds like a funny number for a brush, but it's very, very tiny, very fine. And so I'm going to start to find those legs. So I have one leg coming down and a knot for the knee. And I'm going to work with the other leg as well. And it's not, isn't invisible. It goes a little bit farther down into the water. One step ahead of the other one. Or behind the other one. And then I'll fill those both in.
So I'm going to leave this crane and move up to the birds, still using my number one brush with black paint. And I'm painting the outline of the birds that are in the sky. So I'm just painting the outline. And once I have that outline done, then I can go ahead and I can fill in just with black paint. It is a silhouette. So we don't need to have a whole lot of detail. And I've got a second bird in the sky. I'm going to do the same thing. Just do the outline first. And then I'll fill that in. As I said, if it's not exactly the way you want it to be this time around, you, uh, you will have access to the recording. And so you can redo it if you like. So moving down to the crane's feet, this crane is standing in water. And we want to give a little bit of the impression that where it's put its first leg or front leg, there's a little ring of of um, where the motion is in the water where it's standing. So it can't just be standing in the middle of nowhere. We need to give it a little bit of grounding. Excuse me, Kathy, are you doing that with black paint? This is with black paint. I just did a little ring around the bottom. Yes, that is with black paint. Thank you. You're welcome. So there's just a little ring around the bottom. And then I want to give a little bit of motion underneath that front leg. And so I'm just doing a few dots of water, or a few dots of black. So it's just a little bit lightened up, but it just gives that impression or look, a little bit of a shadow of that leg. And because the other leg is closer, I want to go the opposite direction. So I'm giving a little bit of that shadow underneath it, but it's going to get bigger. So it will get larger so that it looks like it's a little bit of a shadow from the bird.
Now my bird in the distance here has gone a little bit lighter than I want. It's gone a little bit of a gray color. So I'm going to redo it with fresh black paint just to give it that silhouette look, just to freshen it up. If any of your black has turned into a grayish color, this is a good time to touch that up. And I've got some light grayish spots on my neck of my bird. So I'm just going to darken those up. And my, leg, my legs have picked up a little bit of the red from the background what, since it's dried. So I'm just going to add fresh black onto there as well. So just a little bit of fine tuning. And I'd also like to make it even more clear, the separation between sky and water. So I'm just adding a little bit of fresh purple. And it doesn't have to be completely straight or even. It just gives a nice vision for where that split is between sky and water. And I'm just going to add a little detail, just flip a little bit of that color up just with a damp brush. So if you're this far and you have your crane painted and your birds in the background, I'm going to use my large mop brush, which I dipped in water, just clear water, and tapped it off on paper towel. So it's a damp brush. It's not wet enough. I could squeeze just a tiny bit of water out, but it's just a damp brush. And I'm just going to use it and just, just rub here and there on my canvas, just to change a little bit of my background, just to blend a few colors together. If it lifts and leaves a little bit of white in there as part of the sky, that's okay. I'm just lightly, I'm not trying to lift off color. I'm just trying to blend it a little bit more, not trying to touch my crane, just going around it, the outsides, leaving the birds alone. But you can see just by rubbing, I get a little bit of a line in the sky. So a little bit of detail, a little bit of drama. So this is what you can do just, and this is where I say watercolor is very forgiving this way that we can lift and move things a little bit uh, uh, around a little bit, just with a dampened brush. So you see if, if I rub on that red, I can start to pull out some of that color and give a little bit of movement to the water. So a little bit of energy in there. Kathy, can you tell us how you taped down the paper? I'm, I think I missed that. I start with it already taped down, but I'll take it off my, my, my um, background and you can see. Oh. I just use a, a green tape, green paint to painter's tape. And I tape it, this is actually a placemat cut in half, one of those plastic placemats, you know, sometimes you buy those. Mm -hmm. in a, in a dollar store, 
they clean up really nicely, really easily. And then I just tack four corners onto my placemat and stick it on there. Now, some people tape all the way around the outside and that's okay too. You would end up with a very nice border by doing that. But I just tape around the back and I'm not worried about my background because this is, this is a, um, a plastic finish and it cleans up really nicely. Thank you. So if I was to take my paper towel that's damp right now and just rub on my placemat, all of that paint that's on there, it just picks it right up and it's gone, cleans it up really easily. I'm fairly frugal that way. And I don't encourage people to spend a whole lot of money unless you have it and you want to spend it. But if you don't have it, there's lots of inexpensive um, options for you. So what's left to do with this now that we've got our crane painted is we need to decide what does our artist signature look like and where are we going to put it on our canvas. So I encourage you to sign your art. If you give it away to somebody else and you've signed it, you, then you, you'll see it. If they have it posted somewhere, put up somewhere, then you'll say, oh, that's my art. And that's a nice feeling that what you shared there, they're all so pleased with. But it also gives you your own identity as an artist. And so sign your art and be proud of it. You've spent this much time invested in trying new things and learning how to do this. So relish in it. This is your magic. If you use green tape and you put it around the borders, take it from the inside out away from your canvas. If you try to rip it in, uh, pull it on the inside, it will rip your canvas. And, uh, and I speak from experience and it's just sad if you've done all this work. Holly says she buys her green paint from Dollarama, so do I. If I buy my tape from Home Hardware, it's really, really sticky tape. It's great if you're going to be painting, but the Dollarama tape doesn't seem to, a dollar store tape doesn't seem to have the same um, damaging effects to your canvas. So there's our completed project for today. Hopefully you've got this far. Bye, have a good week. <laughs>